while leaps and bounds have been made in our understanding of the solar system, it is still a very mysterious place, where new objects within it are discovered each year. This could include very large objects, such as undiscovered outer solar system planets, but also could include very small objects that we may never find. And that's not even getting into the interstellar objects that pass through the solar system all the time, but we are now just able to detect. So here are 10 mysterious hypothesized objects that could exist in the solar system, but come with spooky implications. Number 10. The Oligarchs Planet formation in our solar system is still an unclear process. To this day, there are minor planets in the outer solar system, the Pluto system among them, that are remnants of sorts of the earliest period of planet formation in our solar system. The question is, however, just how many of these objects there are, and how many there were when the planets initially formed. That's unknown, but it's possible that tens of minor planets remain to be found in the outer solar system, but it may be that there was originally many, many more, and they weren't minor. The oligarch theory of planet formation postulates that there may have been hundreds of full-on planets in the solar system and that the vast majority were either ejected entirely and are now rogue planets wandering the galaxy, or some were flung so far out that they might orbit extremely distantly, taking millions of years to complete their orbits of the sun. This has an interesting effect. If there really were that many planets originally in the solar system, then Earth would be a remnant of them, and would have been an oligarch itself. It did not get ejected, obviously. But it adds just one more reason to think that this planet might actually be very lucky, having jumped through a surprising and complex series of hoops just to arrive at us. Perhaps we live in a very unlikely star system. The Copernican principle that states that we occupy no special position in the universe may be an error. Maybe we do. Number 9. Hails of Comets Stellar encounters are not rare in the history of our star system. Just 70,000 years ago, a red dwarf passed within our own Oort cloud, and in about 1.4 million years, the star Gliese 710 is expected to also pass through our Oort cloud. These encounters are bound to disrupt objects in the outer solar system, some of them heading into the inner solar system, and perhaps on a collision course with Earth. We know that such collisions have happened before. One of them caused the Great End Cretaceous Extinction Event, but unfortunately, there is a long period of time between where objects disturbed from the outer solar system and stellar encounters begin their journey, and when they end it. This is on the order of millions of years, and it becomes at some point very difficult to impossible to determine past stellar encounters between our solar system and other stars. This means that past stellar encounters might have disrupted hails of comets from the outer solar system that could, at any time, be detected heading our way. And, at least right now, we won't see them until it may be too late. What you don't know can hurt you. Number 8. Gna. In 2015, astronomers at the Alma Observatory reported a series of pulses that seemed to suggest that either a group of sources or a single very fast-moving object produced them. It's thought that it was more likely to be something moving fast, roughly somewhere between Saturn and Uranus, though there is much uncertainty there. That could mean that there is a dwarf planet well within the orbits of the known planets of the solar system. That would be unusual, but not astoundingly so. Many of the moons of the gas and ice giants are such objects that were wandering around and were captured, and perhaps this is one that simply hasn't been captured yet. And there are questions about the actual detection itself. It may have been an error, but there is one possibility that's interesting within the debate. It could also be that a rogue planet is very distantly passing by the solar system, and is much larger than a minor planet, perhaps the size of Earth, but much, much further out, as much as 4,000 astronomical units. This rogue planet would be cooking along very rapidly and not be bound to the Sun, but would rather be a wanderer of the galaxy ejected from some other star system. If it were once something else, perhaps an unlucky but once inhabited planet in another star system that got ejected, imagine what we might find there. Number 7. The Wow Signal Distance Question A topic covered on this channel before is the famous Wow Signal, SETI's best candidate yet for a radio signal potentially of alien origin. 
And no, it was not due to comets. That hypothesis is often brought up in the comments, but was actually shot down by the scientific community within weeks of it being advanced. One reason for this was the sheer strength of the signal. WoW was extremely powerful, 30 times the background, far more than what might be produced by hydrogen streaming off a comet. But that also leads to some oddities about the WoW signal that haven't often been talked about and are not well known, despite the fame of the signal. Conventional thinking about the WoW signal has been that if it was a signal of alien origin, it was from some distant star system. There are, however, two issues with this. The first is that searches of the areas where the signal might have originated didn't really reveal too many candidates for stars that might have been the origin. The second is the signal strength. To produce that powerful of a signal to cross interstellar distances would require enormous amounts of energy, terawatts at least, and would constitute an enormous beacon that seems unlikely. In fact, it was the most powerful signal that that particular radio telescope ever picked up at that frequency around the 1420 MHz hydrogen line, and it operated for decades. The other part of this was just how the radio telescope was set up. Distant radio sources in this telescope, Ohio State's Big Ear Radio Telescope, were distinguishable from close interference signals by fitting the antenna pattern. The scientists involved with the experiment were able to calculate that whatever produced the WOW signal, it had to be located at least half the distance to the moon to fit the pattern. This eliminates almost all possible sources of Earth interference present in the 1970s, along with an international agreement that prohibits broadcasting at the hydrogen line to preserve it for radio astronomy. And if someone did clandestinely broadcast there, they'd have revealed their spy satellite's existence to all of the planet's radio astronomers, including rivals. But halfway the distance to the moon is not far in terms of space, so it may easily be that the WOW signal wasn't all that powerful, it was merely very close, as in within our solar system, but not so close as to be from Earth. Spooky indeed, but there's one more aspect here. The signal was also just slightly above the 1420 MHz line. This could be due to it being intentionally broadcast that way, or it could be a slight blue shift. If it was the latter, then it would mean that whatever produced the WOW signal is slowly moving towards us. Number 6. Many Minor Planets That Might Harbor Life One of the great discoveries of the space age has been the existence of an entirely new class of minor planets and moons that instead of having surface oceans, they have subsurface oceans locked under ice where life could, in principle, exist. This started with Jupiter's moon Europa, but now many such moons are known that seem to host liquid water under their ice shells. But this also extends to minor planets. Indeed, Pluto seems to have such an ocean, and indeed has active organic chemistry going on in its atmosphere. This opens up an odd possibility, in that the many known and undiscovered Kuiper Belt objects, minor planets similar to Pluto, might also host oceans and thus possibly life. In principle, that could lead to a situation where more objects hosting life exist in the outer solar system than the inner, despite the very much alive planet we live on. It's also still uncertain as to just what kinds of life could exist in ice shell oceans. One position is that whatever we may find is likely to be microbial, but we also live on a planet where the oceans produced much more than microbes. So it's possible that entire ecosystems of many different species, microscopic to macroscopic, could exist. But our oceans have also produced sharks, and in the past giant prehistoric megalodon sharks the size of large whales. Who knows what lies beneath these ice shells? To paraphrase 2010, all these worlds are yours, except Europa, because it's infested with giant space piranhas with razor-sharp ice teeth. Always send in a robot first. Number 5. Planet 5 One mystery about life on Earth is just how old it is. There is some evidence that it arose during a hypothesized period known as the Late Heavy Bombardment. This is odd to say the least. To expect life to arise on Earth while it was under heavy bombardment by asteroids seems implausible. But there does seem to be evidence for this event preserved on the Moon. Though, this is in question now, and it's possible that it may have been misinterpreted. And it's also unclear as to just what caused the late heavy bombardment if it indeed happened. 
One hypothesis includes the past existence of another planet in the solar system. This planet, known as Planet 5, would have been small, about half the size of Mars, and would have been in a semi-stable orbit between the asteroid belt and Mars. After about 600 million years after this hypothetical planet formed, its orbit would have destabilized, sending it into the asteroid belt and disturbing it, causing asteroid material to bombard the inner solar system. And indeed, the star Eta Corvi seems to have this type of process of late heavy bombardment going on right now. What happened to Planet 5 after this is unknown, if it ever existed. The most likely fate for it was that it fell into the sun. Another option was that instead of disturbing the asteroid belt, it impacted Mars, and that was the material that composed the bombardment. But it may also be possible that it was ejected, and this former killer planet is still out there somewhere. Or maybe it never existed at all. Number 4. Prior Earth Civilizations Earth is a planet that constantly renews itself. Everything from volcanic action, plate tectonics and subduction, weathering, etc. all contribute to Earth resurfacing itself constantly. In rare cases, certain past evidence of life can fossilize, but this is actually a rare process, and our fossil record is very incomplete. There are entire species that once lived on this world that we will never know existed, despite our still regularly finding new species of dinosaurs and other animals many times each year. This also goes for our civilization. If we went extinct tomorrow, Earth would begin to break down everything we've ever built, and after about 10,000 years, it would become increasingly difficult to tell we were ever here. After millions of years, there would be very few ways that our past presence could be detected. This opens up the possibility that there may have been past technological species on Earth that either went extinct or left. Probably not, and we've never found evidence for it, but it also can't be ruled out. Fast forward to a concept within SETI for searching for artificial lighting as a technosignature. The idea goes that if we ever saw clear evidence of artificial lighting on the dark sides of exoplanets, it would be distinguishable from anything natural. But this is currently limited by the instrumentation we have, meaning that about the closest we could look for this right now would be Kuiper Belt objects in the outer solar system. Imagine if we found evidence of artificial lighting on a Kuiper Belt object. Highly unlikely to be sure, but if we ever did, given the vastness of space and how difficult it is crossing it, it would be more likely that we were seeing a past Earth civilization that left the planet than it would be seeing an alien civilization that came here and colonized the object. Unlikely, but food for thought, and hopefully, for our sake, they never want their planet back. Number 3. Not of the Star System Our solar system may in some sense seem very isolated, light years away from the current closest star, but there's also the matter of time. This solar system has existed for over 4.5 billion years, which is well enough time, many times over, for objects from anywhere in the galaxy to travel here. After all, the Milky Way is only about 100,000 light years in diameter. At sublight speeds, that's not very much when you have many billions of years to traverse space. That means that there could be, and likely are, a host of captured interstellar objects in the solar system, ranging from asteroids to comets to even possibly a captured rogue planet, though that's not very likely. And these objects, once discovered and visited, would provide a wealth of information on the composition of other star systems, though we'll probably never know the exact star systems that they originated from. And the same types of objects are already being spotted passing through, but not being captured by the solar system. It's also possible that evidence of intelligent alien life may be present in the solar system, and that our first detection of an alien civilization will be an artifact rather than radio signals. While the Milky Way is vast, it's also very ancient and well old enough for civilizations to have traversed it many times at sublight speeds. That opens up the possibility of von Neumann's self-replicating probes to be present in the solar system, and indeed throughout the galaxy. But there's one potential technosignature that's noteworthy here for its longevity, and it's not often mentioned. It's altered asteroids, and these objects are noteworthy because they serve as very long records. In fact, some materials, such as comets from the outer solar system, can be pristine records of not just the early solar system, but a lot of what's happened to them since they formed. 
Asteroids and comets also happen to be the easiest sources for raw materials in the solar system, due to them having very low gravity. It's much easier to mine iron, or even gold or platinum in space, than it is mining it on the surface of a planet and having to rocket it up to space. And the signs of past mining would be telltale in that the composition of the asteroid would be unnaturally devoid of whatever it is that was mined, in contrast to the composition of natural asteroids. Compare this to other areas of SETI. For a radio signal, you just have to happen to be looking at just the right time to pick anything up. This means that another civilization has to apparently exist at exactly the time you happen to be capable of radio astronomy. Same with any other technosignature. You have to exist at a time where it's visible. And since technology and civilizations probably don't last forever, that's a tall order. Unless there are a whole lot of alien civilizations out there. But with an altered asteroid in the solar system, it would preserve a long-term record. Meaning that in our solar system, you only need one alien civilization to pass through, selectively grabbing raw materials at any point in the last 4.5 billion years in principle to know that aliens are, or were, somewhere out there. And that's probably one of the few things we would ever know about the mysterious alien miners from long, long ago. Number 2. The Unknown Lurker in 1927, experimental radio operator Jorgen Hals noted that in addition to normal radio echoes, there were also long delayed echoes that didn't seem to have a ready explanation. He contacted several physicists at the time and no one could come up with an easy explanation. This is because the delays are so long, above 2.7 seconds after the transmission was sent, but can be up to 12 seconds or more. These echoes are still noted to this day and most theories about their origin revolve around the Earth's ionosphere holding signals between two layers of air, causing the signals to repeatedly circle Earth. Another involves the signal repeatedly bouncing back and forth between the Moon and Earth, making up the elapsed time. Both explanations, however, seem a bit of a stretch, that the Earth's atmosphere could hold a signal for the thousands of times it would need to circle the Earth seems unlikely, yet the echoes exist. There is, however, another option that has been advanced, that there is something out there that is receiving the signals and then broadcasting them back. This idea is known as a Bracewell probe, and the idea is that that is the starting point of first contact. This general idea was also used in the movie Contact, where the aliens first made contact with us by repeating the broadcast of the 1936 Olympics. Thankfully, that particular broadcast is unlikely to have been strong enough to pick up outside of Berlin, much less at a distance in space. To speculate, and remember it's very likely that these echoes are of natural origin, this probe would be pretty close, though the times between different echoes varies widely. By solar system standards, Mars at its closest approach to Earth is close, causing a radio delay of 4 minutes, though it's usually much longer. For an LDE to repeat a signal 12 seconds later, that means that the source is not far, but significantly further than the moon regardless of the cause. That's a problem. And here's where we go from spooky to scary. A highly advanced spacefaring alien civilization parking right next to you is the very worst possible thing that could happen to the human species, short of an asteroid extinction. And such a scenario could well include that. It's at that point that you are no longer calling the shots in your star system, and the whole idea of global or national security becomes meaningless, in that there would be no such thing as security. In that sense, thankfully, LDEs are very probably just a trick of the ionosphere. Number 1. The Primordial Black Hole One interesting development in planetary science of late is that we may be very close to discovering a new planet in the outer solar system. Now, minor planets are known, and many more probably lay undiscovered, but large, proper planets may also be out there. This is of course the hypothesis of Planet 9, which would lurk distantly and perturb the motion of objects in the outer solar system. The other is Planet 10, a Mars-sized planet that, if it exists, would explain the mysterious Kuiper cliff feature of the outer solar system. But one other hypothesis has been advanced. That Planet 9 isn't actually a planet, but a tiny primordial black hole. This would be a black hole about the size of a softball lurking in the outer solar system that would have formed shortly after the Big Bang. 
On the one hand, it would be fascinating that such an object were so close, but on the other hand, actually finding it would be beyond a needle in a haystack. We'd be close to a black hole without knowing exactly where it was or what it was doing. But then, there's also the theory that the universe itself is actually a white hole, and that everything in our universe spewed out of the other side of a black hole. And then there's the one where certain aspects of the Big Bang look a whole lot like the interior of a black hole. So we may live in one, but sometimes it doesn't. So who knows, but one thing is clear. Being far from a black hole is generally a better thing than being close to one, and we may be much closer to one than we think. Thanks for listening. I am futurist and science fiction author John Michael Godier, currently concerned about the highly advanced alien civilization relocating right next to us. We want to borrow your lawnmower, or else. Yeah, that's a nice looking LeBaron you're driving. Would be a shame if something happened to it. I mean, what would you even do? It's extraterrestrials. Or how about aliens that well know the concept of a lawsuit? Gna diverted our von Neumann probe, causing it to spiral into the sun, and it happened on your lawn. The solar system is one huge legal liability. Very disconcerting, and be sure to check out my books at your favorite online book retailer and subscribe to my channels for regular in-depth explorations into the interesting, weird, and unknown aspects of this amazing universe in which we live.